Hello, I'm Fiona Williams. I'm a senior lecturer at the Department of Geography and International Development at the University of Chester. And I'd like to just spend the next few minutes really reflecting on, on rural connectivity and business productivity uh, as part of the CREST uh, webinar, Smart Rural webinar series. My work in recent years has tended to uh, focus very much on sort of policy and practice in, in rural studies, rural areas, uh, particularly in the UK. And more recently, again, that has tended to focus on the implications of digital connectivity or, or in some cases, a lack of digital connectivity on rural communities. So the presentation is structured in terms of three main parts. Firstly, I'd like us to consider where we are at in terms of urban rural digital divides. And so looking very much at the digital aspects of rural connectivity. Um, and then what are the manifestations of that in practice? So what are the implications of that connectivity in, in terms of on the ground, in terms of top technical and, and non-technical barriers to access, what does that mean for those who live and work in, in rural areas? And then finally, um, address what I was asked to do in terms of reflecting on the implications of that for business productivity. So overall, really, the, it's a short presentation and hopefully can signpost to, to further resources or further information if, if and as people are interested. So what do we know about rural digital connectivity? Well, there is a, a huge literature out there in terms of the urban rural digital divide and how that presents itself. Much of it uh, has looked at the implications of infrastructure, to the territorial divide in, in terms of being able to get infrastructure to particular areas or not. But that has also, it's not as clear as a, an urban and a rural divide, but there is work that, that shows actually, and common sense in a lot of ways, the more remote a rural area is, the more likely it is to be digitally excluded in that it is very difficult to get the infrastructure out to, to people who live in those remote rural areas. And how do we see how this translates on the ground? Well, there is a, a dashboard available. Um, I've spent uh, many, uh, many a, an hour on, on the dashboard looking at, at uh, how particular areas fare in terms of uh, broadband uh, connectivity. And this is based on broadband connectivity and speeds that um, are derived from data collected from the, the Ofcoms or, or based on the analysis of Ofcoms Connected Nations reports. So already that data is a little bit out of date in, in, in fairness. But it does give a, a broad overview of how particular areas down to sort of small area data and postcode data, how particular areas fare. And you can see here that you know, there are um, constituencies uh, or constituency data for, for Shropshire. And actually, it's not looking so good in terms of relative to other areas of the the UK. You can see there that you know there are a number of, of purple, dark purple cells, if, if you like, and that, that puts those areas in the worst 10% of areas in, in the UK in terms of their, their sort of best, or in this case, worst connectivity. So if we map that data, uh, the same data that's used in the, the House of Commons Library dashboard, onto to the situation in, in Shropshire, you can see here that actually a lack of decent broadband is an issue uh, across the county, but it is more problematic in the southwest of the county, which again, as as I mentioned earlier on, is is 
as much a, a factor as the, the, the topography and, and the remoteness of, of some of those areas um, as, as much as anything else. And if we look at how the data in terms of super fast availability translates on, on the ground, you can see here the areas that have less access to uh, super fast broadband, um, i.e. those the percentage of lines that are capable of receiving uh, download speeds of at least 30 megabits per second. Um, now that's lines that are capable of um, receiving those download speeds. Again, whether consumers actually subscribe to, to that is, 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 another, is, is another area of, of discussion. But that uh, again shows how, how it maps out on the ground in Shropshire in terms of super fast broadband availability. What I particularly like about this data set is that you can drill down to the small area data, so data at a, a postcode level. Um, it is difficult to see on the slide here, but again, it's, it's open access, so everybody can, can go in and, and look at the, the area, the data that they're particularly interested in. But what we've got here is the Ludlow constituency and um, how broadband connectivity uh, fares at, at, in terms of these, these particular postcodes. The more remote that that postcode is, as you might expect, you know, the situation is, or the legend um, is, is, is very much in the area of poor, worse and, and worst, which given the, the sort of higher level area data then you know that that in some respects is, is to be expected but again as I said you know if people have particular interest in an area then that data is available to, to go and take a look at. So I think it's fair to say you know Shropshire still has a number of challenges in, in terms of you know sort of digital infrastructure and the only other thing to, to point out before moving on is that the situation in terms of broadband is in a number of areas compounded by a lack of mobile uh, connectivity as well. Where I live, I go outside the front door and there is no mobile phone signal. So that you know, presents a, another sort of layer of, of challenge in, in terms of um, going about the, the day to day. But you know, people get around that as well. So what I'd like to move on to now is, is how, you know, what are the realities of all of this? How do people uh, live um, in, in, in terms of the, the, the connectivity that, that they have? And, and what are the implications of that? As you might expect, in practice, um, Communities and individuals that do live in remote rural areas, or what we refer to often as, as these deep rural areas, are by nature of geography much more likely to be digitally excluded. And as such, um, as a, a colleague of mine writes here, um, much less likely to be able to engage you know, with, with life online that, that tends to be you know, sort of taken for granted and is the norm in, in other areas. The eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that the imagery on the cover of the previous report um, is, is an area in southwest Shropshire. And that project plus uh, this one here that I'm about to talk about um, is part of a, a suite of projects that was done under the auspices of Dot Rural, an EPSRC funded research hub at the University of Aberdeen. I worked there for a period of time and I was involved in, in these projects, hence the, the Shropshire connection, because that's where we did a lot of our work in the field. Um, the second project, and, and this is the, the one that I'll probably talk about the most, was one called uh, Rural 
Pause, the Rural uh, Public Access Wi-Fi Service. And the, the main aim of that project was to try to develop and test new access methods to provide commercially viable internet service provision that was acceptable to users in what were termed these hard to reach rural areas and communities, i.e. those areas where it isn't commercially viable for the internet service providers to, to go to. And bear in mind, this was, you know, we're talking back to beginning this project in, in 2013. What we actually did then was we provided uh, eight households in South West Shropshire that really either had no internet um, at that time or had internet that that really wasn't acceptable to them you know in the sense that the, the quality of the provision uh, didn't allow them to to sort of do what they wanted to do and we then looked at over a 12 month period you know looked at at the the difference that having um a satellite broadband connection we worked with avanti on this one um, actually made to their their day to day, both in terms of the household, but in terms of the the businesses as well. So we there were five micro businesses as part of these households: um, agricultural, tourism, and and craft businesses. Again, reflecting you know what what's going on in in sort of the the very rural parts of of the county. And in total, we had 20 sort of individual users as, as part of those households. So what do I mean by the households were unserved or underserved? Well, effectively, as, as I mentioned, the fact there was either no internet access or that internet access wasn't deemed fit for purpose. Um, and drawing on the, the earlier Two Speed Britain report, what we saw on the ground with these sort of quite small numbers reflected very much in terms of what was going on in, in the, the, the UK as a whole. Um, one of the, you know, one of the, the users, it was a, a teenage girl in one of the households that, that we were um, working with. And before the, the satellite broadband deployment she she was saying telling me about how the fact that you know her, her broadband dropped out so much that her friends at school and so on were saying actually she shouldn't be on the internet at all it was a it was a, a waste of time there were other uh, households that were keen to be online and had worked with bt um to to try and and sort of get a, a connection and again, as that quote says there, in terms of you know the, on the the never had broadband column, this this particular lady was telling me about the fact that okay the whole cable was relayed, but even at the end of all of that, you know they they effectively as a household got told there's nothing we can do to get the internet. Please please don't call us again. You know that that's it. And then there was a an older generation household that actually there were participants, but this particular person was perhaps less convinced you know and and, and uh, this this gentleman uh, telling us that actually you don't miss what you've never had I'm not sure that I need broadband you know and, and so on so that's just a, a quick sort of overview of, of what uh, in practice of what we mean by unserved or underserved so what we were in looking at a small number of, of businesses uh, in, in this particular project. I think that the implications of being connected in, in terms of their, their business, their household, their everyday, really quite striking. We had four upland farmers um, in, as, as part of the project. And once they had access to the internet it really did change how they went about things if they could do something online they did it online 
Um, as, as shown there by a, a quote from one of them is particularly keen, but it's revolutionized how we do things. We would miss it, the internet, too much now because we do everything online. And these um, business, uh, businesses and households are engaged with the internet in, in a number of ways. So there's a, a list there uh, of, of various farm activities, tasks, you know, th throughout throughout the 12 month period. And the number of ticks, the, the, particularly those in, in red, are, are the engagement with those particular activities you know, through through the internet. Um, for example, things like sourcing second-hand vehicles, the, the fact that you know these these individuals were able to browse and look for better deals further afield and so on, I actually saved the business money. Another one doing sheep registrations, livestock registrations online, again, you know, that saved the business money because you know they, they weren't sort of being penalized for, for doing the paperwork. Um, hard copy. Um, there was the particular farmers very keen at looking at back breeding in terms of you know sort of pedigree uh, pedigree lines and so on, and all of the the farmers involved in the study, older generation and younger generation, actually used the internet to look up sort of stock market reports to to look at the weather forecast, um, and all of them. I think importantly, subscribe to a broadband provider post project. So that's just a, a very simple and, and sort of quick and easy list of, of, of how the, the internet was used in terms of these particular businesses. But the point is, it did allow these particular businesses to access information and it did save them money in, in doing so. So again, if we look at Shropshire as a whole, you can see that where there are challenges, issues in terms of broadband connectivity, there's also a huge untapped potential. And although the previous slide concentrated or focus much more on, you know, sort of perhaps the, the farming activity in those businesses. There are other things that go on in those households as well. So you've got to on and off farm diversification that, that may be sort of reliant on, on internet co connectivity. And also, as we're acutely aware of now, you know, there's a number of pluriactive households. So within that household, whilst there may be the, the main farm business with perhaps some tourism or some crafts or, or what have you as well, you've also got people who work and live in that household but, but work elsewhere, generate income and, and bring it back into that household. Again, the internet is, is, is key to enabling that to, to happen also. And there are a number of studies that actually reinforce these points. Um, the NFU uh, did, did a survey, and again, you know, a number of farmers feel that they're actually getting left behind because of, of rural connectivity. Um, some work done in, in Aberystwyth, or done by Aberystwyth Uni, um, again, you know, point to the, the fact that, you know, connectivity in, in a number of areas is, is poor, with some having no access to broadband and speeds being limiting others. Now, the, the sort of knock-on effects of this is that if, if a particular group can't access decent internet, then by the same, by that token, if you like, you know, computer skills, there is no opportunity then to perhaps in enhance computer skills. So they remain at a, at a sort of fairly limited level, which only really allows for perhaps more low level technology adoption in, in a lot of cases. That in turn then impacts again in terms of a, a more passive approach to, to growth because you know that, that sort of more ambitious growth 
or trying to maximize growth opportunities you know are, are sort of uh, hindered by by the fact that you know the the infrastructure and the the requirements aren't there to be able to sort of progress that A report carried out by Scotland's Rural University College also um, considered the, the digital potential of, of rural areas across the UK by uh, drawing on, on data um, from rural businesses. And again, the rural businesses say that actually there, there are clear benefits to digital adoption. It enables re remote working, it improves access to customers and suppliers, and it boosts overall business efficiency. So the same sorts of messages are, are coming through here time and time again. The report also you sort of identifies you know, these through these significant wide-ranging rural business benefits that actually if they were overcome, if, did, did, if the constraints to digital adoption were overcome, then you know, there is scope to unlock at least 12 billion um, of extra productivity per annum. So the point there, I think, is the fact that you know, digital connectivity is good for business productivity. And to sum up, there are a huge number of sort of complexities in, in terms of attitudes, experiences, competen competences. Um, you know, when we're talking about rural areas, when we're talking about businesses with, within those areas. But I think it's clear to see there is generally this willingness to engage with the digital. You know, I think we, we are now at the point that even amongst older generations that that there there is this willingness, there is this acceptance of need to engage. But also in terms of rural businesses, the requirements of the, the internet are, are highly variable. Again, that will depend on the type of business. It will depend on where that business is situated and, and in what sector it operates. So I think when we're talking about digital connectivity, these sort of user, non-user binaries are really increasingly you know, redundant. Um, and that actually what we're we're talking about much more so is constraints in terms of connectivity perhaps some users that aren't as engaged as they could be um and also this this idea of, of sort of proxy users you know that's that's another way and ways and means that that people try and overcome some of these issues but i think and this has been brought into sort of sharp um, you know, sharp focus you know, more recently is that there is this sort of wider social discourse that everybody can do this can't they and everybody has access to this don't they and the point is that isn't the case you know there, there are certainly in in some rural areas you know Shropshire included in that you know there are still a number of challenges there in terms of getting you know, suitable fit for purpose infrastructure out to those areas that need it. And that, that then is, is, you know, is, is the nub of the problem really. How do you best support those um, going forward that, that live in these deep rural areas and the sectors that operate in these areas? But as we've heard through the webinar series, there is there are solutions and you know there are smart solutions um, but a lot of this is is work ongoing and it's a case of watching this space thank you very much for for listening um, as i said at the beginning there is more information out there if anything is of particular interest and i'm happy to follow up with questions um, if anybody has any. Okay, thank you. Uh, stay safe, stay well, and um, you know, hope to, to meet all 
with you all at some point in the future. Bye-bye.